Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to TCPL Packaging Limited's earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CDR India. Thank you and over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on TCPL Packaging's Q3 and 9M FI24 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us uh, Mr. Saket Kanoria, Managing Director, Mr. Akshay Kanoria, Executive Director, and Mr. Vivek Dave, GM Finance of the company. We would like to begin the call with brief opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Sakit Konoria to make his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining us on our earnings call for the period ended December 31, 2023. I trust all of you have had the opportunity to go through our results shared with you earlier. I will initiate the call by taking you through our business highlights for the period under review, after which we will open the forum to have a Q&A session. <coughs> In recent quarters, our company has demonstrated remarkable resilience in navigating through the challenges in the domestic market. This period saw subdued demand growth, particularly in the liquor segment, due to decarbonization, along with a notable decline in raw material pricing. Despite these factors, our performance in export and growing contribution from the flexible segment has supported overall growth in the first nine months. The impact of reduced volumes post-festive season has been notable, especially affecting growth in Q3. On a consolidated basis, the Q3 FY24 revenue decreased by just under 4%, standing at Rs. 363 crore. However, in nine months FY24, our revenues expanded by 5% year-on-year to Rs. 1141 crore. <clears throat> on the profitability front, though, we reported healthy standalone EBITDA of Rs. 59 crore, leading to a healthy margin of 16.6%. The performance of our subsidiaries, TCPL Innofilm and Creative Offset, adversely impacted our consolidated margin. As a result, our consolidated EBITDA stood at Rs. 55 crore, with margin at 15%. In the TCPL Innofilm vertical, we have encountered certain setbacks on our new uh, blown film line. Our internal team, along with the machine vendor, are actively working towards addressing these issues with a resolution anticipated in the next few months. However, despite these setbacks, we are making good progress in the development of sustainable packaging using our MGO PE film. This initiative has successfully supported one of the world's largest SFCT companies in introducing their first fully recyclable MTOP monopolymer pouch for their tea brand in India. Regarding creative, while domestic electronic demand has remained subdued, particularly uh, after the festive season, the, vert the vertical has successfully secured many new customers, contributing to encouraging year-on-year -year growth. Recently, we acquired the remaining stake in creative from the previous promoter, achieving 100% ownership. We remain confident in Creative's huge potential despite the near-term challenges. As we actively work on scaling its operations, we expect a positive contribution to our profitability from next year onwards. On the operational front, we are pleased to announce the successful initiation of our third flexible line at our Silvasa facility. Incorporation of a new box, rotography of press, uh, into the flexible packaging unit in Silvasa complements the existing two lines. With the addition of this state-of-the-art printing press, along with other balancing and post-press equipment, we have significantly increased our production capacity for flexible packaging. 
in conclusion, we are actively broadening our reach through customer and sector diversification. Despite short-term challenges, we maintain a positive outlook, recognizing the structural growth trends in Indian manufacturing sector, including packaging. With investments in enhancing our capabilities within both paperboard and flexible segments, we believe TCPL is well positioned to leverage this opportunity. On that note, I would request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you all may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Pawan Kumar from Ratnatreya Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, on the creative side, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I understand the, how the, the predictability of the rest of the business, but on the creative side, what are the factors that particularly drive this particular business? And going forward, what is the... Uh, Yet full capacity, what will be the revenues that you would be able to achieve here? And are there any CAPEX plans on that side? Hi, I'm Akshay. I'll just answer that question. Uh, so what drives the business? Uh, I didn't understand clearly, but uh, I think basically you mean like what's the industry like? Or, uh, so basically, Akshay, what I was asking was, uh, looks like from whatever uh, numbers that, are, uh, that have been put out, uh, the, the contribution from creative side, at least on the revenues, seem to seem to have almost half as, com as compared to the last quarter. So I'm just wondering, uh, I mean, the, uh, exactly. Yeah. So your line is a bit unclear, but that's not correct. The revenue of creative is growing in uh, double digits. Yeah, by high double digits. Uh, so there's. That way there is growth, there is no concern in terms of growth, but uh, it's still at a low base, so the, uh, you know, the overall business still has a long way to go. Uh, and as far as the industries that, uh, that factory mostly targets the electronics business, but we have made some headway with FMCG and cosmetics and uh, food and those kind of customers as well where we see in uh, long term there being a very good growth potential as those brands start premiumizing more and more. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope that answered on your question. On the capacity and capex? Oh, yeah, on the capacity and capex, on the capacity side, we have uh, enhanced substantially the capacity since we took over the factory. And we recently, uh, you know, did a, a major renovation to the plant as well as upgradation of the printing equipment. Um, so we have enough capacity now to go into triple digit figures uh, because basically this kind of product line, there's a very big variation in the value one can output uh, on the machines over there based on the quality of job because you can do a box of 250, 300 rupees also, you can do a 20 rupee also. So the capacity does not vary that much. It, 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 it's not like a, the same kind of way of working. And as just to add, the creative uh, has achieved a 20% growth on top line in the current year. So far. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, for this particular quarter, uh, what would be the revenues? Can you, can you please outline if that would be possible? So we don't give the uh, quarter-wise uh, re revenue for the uh, for the subsidiary company, but there is a double-digit, high double-digit growth. That that you are saying for the nine months number, right? Even for quarter, even yeah, even for quarter, quarter twenty percent plus growth. Plus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, and any capex plans next year on the creative side to further enhance the capacity or uh, no, as nothing as well? really no. Nothing significant. Yeah. Okay. I'll get get back in the Thank you. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Vipul Shah from RW Equity. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, sir. The, for the first time, uh, you know, we are seeing actually a sequential uh, decline in uh, the trailing 12-month uh, revenue and the EBITDA, although, you know, gross profit has uh, shown a minor growth. Uh, if I uh, read your comments, sir, in the second quarter, uh, you know, you mentioned there was good volume growth. So, uh, just wanted to check, sir, uh, in this uh, third quarter, uh, how much of a volume decline uh, have we seen? Actually, I don't. Uh, uh, you are saying trailing 12 months, we are declined. We have not declined. In fact, if we talk about the current year, in nine months, our revenue has grown 5% firstly. But uh, there's another matrix which uh, I would like to add, which is the net conversion revenue, because. What's happened is that the raw material prices in the current year have gone down compared to the elevated raw material rates uh, in 2022. And so if we see the, um, you know, in the FY21-22, the company had a revenue of 1,055 crore, which grew 32% to a revenue of 1,400 crore in 22-23. And on that base, we are now 5% up. Uh, however, the net conversion uh, revenue last year, it, that is FY23, grew 37%, while revenue grew 32%, net conversion revenue grew 37%. And in the current year, the uh, same rate has been maintained. So what we are seeing is that the top line shows that the growth is uh, very moderate, but that is essentially out of raw material pricing correction uh, because the international prices of all feedstock has gone down significantly, and that has uh, uh, affected our revenue, uh, obviously, because paperboard price and polyester film and BOPP and all uh, substrate rates have gone down significantly in the current year. No, that I understand, sir. So, is there, uh, you know, in this third quarter, is there any uh, volume decline we've seen, sir? Uh, volume is basically flat in the third flat. quarter. Yes. That's uh, basically uh, after Diwali, where the uh, demand uh, growth has been very uh, subdued. There was a, a lot of inventory in the pipeline at our customers' end. So, the offtake was... Uh, more subdued than a second. You know, every year after Diwali, there's a bit of a hangover. This time it was um, slightly worse than usual yeah. because there was a lot of stock in the system. But that's yeah, bouncing back this quarter, what we see. Yes. Yeah, because, you know, generally also if I uh, read the MD's comment that uh, this uh, liquor decartonizing has also yeah. uh, been an issue, yeah. is generally... Yeah. Uh, Third quarter, you know, and you see the results of the liquor companies also. So, they have actually reported uh, pretty decent numbers. So, just one question, sir, you know, which I had is that, uh, is this liquor decartonizing a temporary setback or uh, in your view, it is a much more secular shift to uh, maybe other packaging materials? I mean, right now, the liquor companies is not moving to any other packaging material. They are selling the bottle without the packaging at all. And this seems to be a uh, decision taken by these two global multinationals, uh, except for limited edition packs for which they still buy some packaging. But uh, yes, it's a big decline. And now how much time it will continue for or whether it will continue forever is something, uh, you know, very hard to predict that this obviously uh, we would uh, like them to come back and consumers. Ultimately, it's to be decided by consumers and how they perceive the um, material, you know, the product. Uh, so it's a bit early to uh, comment on that. But for us, it's a very big uh, impact because while our nine-month growth has been 5%, let's say if liquor was not declining the way it has, we would have been a very comfortable double-digit uh, growth.
got it sir and uh, sir last if i may uh, is that uh, have we also uh, seen some uh, slow down in the uh, you know exports uh, this uh, quarter specifically and going forward with the uh, uh, with the geopolitical uh, disturbances which are there you know do do we see uh, envisage uh, you know a, a more uh, subdued export uh, potential in export uh, the, the uh, in export, the challenge, of course, right now, which is for the last six, seven weeks, is this crisis in the Red Sea, which is pushing yeah. up uh, a, a sea freight and also the time uh, to market. But otherwise, the uh, export has uh, performed all right. And uh, going forward also, we don't expect any uh, big change. Of course, if the Red Sea continue for another one year or something like that, then that is bound to impact uh, all companies and all types of products. Uh, thank you so much, sir, and I'll come back in the queue. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Datta from Minerva Asset Advisors. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. So just uh, for how... Can, you speak speak you? Yeah, can you speak up, please? Yeah, uh, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, little louder. Yeah, yeah. so uh, thanks for the opportunity. So just for housekeeping, I wanted to understand how did the EBITDA per converted ton move in the standalone business? So converted ton, we don't really me measure that matrix, but uh, you must have seen the data in terms of percentage of revenue, uh, which has in fact increased in the standalone uh, company. Right, but revenue might have noise in terms of how paper board is or plastic is being priced, which is why I wanted to know this metric. Right, okay, but for done is uh, not, uh, we don't look at that way. Right, okay. Uh, so, again, would it be possible to break down the revenue decline in no films and the COPPL business by volume and pricing? No, right, that's uh, not possible to do that. Uh, again, it's not homogeneous material. There is no revenue decline, though, in uh, either of those two uh, companies. Okay, not even for the quarter in particular? Yeah, no, not even for the quarter. Okay. Uh, and finally, could you, uh, can you quantify the expected revenue impact in FY24 from decarbonizing in the spirits industry? And also, would you expect to see more of this in FY25? Uh, I think the uh, FY24 has borne the brunt of the decline in the carton, uh, decartonizing for the liquor. So in FY25, uh, the starting point itself is uh, low, so we won't see any further decline. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Janice Chenda from Spark PWM. Please go ahead. Can you repeat uh, what the name, sir? Sorry. Janice Chenda from Spark. Spark. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. I'm audible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm Janice Chenda from Spark Private Well. Uh, we already covered TCPL packaging. Uh, my more than question, I would like to give a suggestion or a feedback. That since now we have started a third uh, flexi packaging line as well, uh, can we get a quarterly breakup at least in terms of what is our flexi revenue versus our carton revenues on a quarterly basis? And how much is our export revenue versus domestic revenue on a quarterly basis? Is it possible to incorporate that in our uh, quarterly presentations? See, we'll uh, consider your suggestion and um, our presentation is quite elaborate in any case. So we'll we'll discuss and we'll see what what uh, to the extent we can share. Yeah, thanks very much for your uh, coverage and uh, interest. But you know the competition is all private. All are looking at our numbers, and few will be attending these calls also. So as you know, we have to balance the the info we share and what we don't share. I completely understand the privacy aspect of the business. 
uh, but still some directional data will help us understand a bit more secondly yeah. my question is to do with uh, employee cost which has gone up uh, so uh, yeah, any yeah, particular reason employee, employee cost employee cost yeah and any particular reason behind that employee cost has gone up in line uh, you know with the uh, big increase in minimum wages in the current year there's been uh, unprecedented uh, almost 15% increase in minimum wage almost across uh, all our work plants so that is one factor the second is of course the annual uh, increment and the third is the some increase in headcount because of the higher capacity which has been created so while the revenue has gone up 5% employee cost has gone up i think 14 15% but it's a uh, base for the future really we we should be able to normalize that okay thank you so much yes yeah. thank you thank you the next question is from nikhil shetty from nuwama wealth please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, so sir as per our understanding uh, export uh, growth pace was slow during q3 when we compare it to uh, q1 and q2 this year plus uh, i believe uh, as per our calculation around 8 to 10% kind of a domestic uh, business degrew uh, uh, this quarter maybe because of the volume or uh, you know the slower uh, second half of this quarter is it a right understanding the export uh, uh, has been uh, has not grown in q3 compared to q2 there is a, you're basically on the right track maybe by a quarter or so the, the difference but uh, the domestic has uh, has not declined really the total is about flat in the current year the uh, current quarter total uh, revenue so is there any seasonality in the export market or uh, is it because of a base or uh, due to some rate issue uh, there's not any major seasonality i would say uh, i mean unlike in uh, the do- domestic which is uh, quite seasonal nowadays because of the diwali lead up to diwali is uh, generally more buoyant in export we don't find any such uh, in, you know event as such and sir uh, is there a base left uh, due to cartelization in q4 or it is already done like now we are at a break even and uh, q4 will not see impact of the cartelization yeah q4 will see much lesser impact of the cartelizing because the cartelizing started from july august 22 and then uh, you know it slowly slowly uh, Uh, the impact came so we've seen the brunt of it and in the this quarter current quarter still there will be some there impact, will be some impact but probably by but from next year i guess no yeah. it should be normalized next okay, financial year will be normal yeah okay q q1 onwards you're saying yeah yeah q1 yes okay and sir uh, during your opening remarks you mentioned about uh, adding a new customer in inno films so what kind of opportunity we can expect from uh, this particular customer so oh, in uh, what i mentioned is that in, uh, we have launched a this fully recyclable uh, packaging made out of the film from you know film uh, you know film is uh, uh, got great opportunity uh, but we had some challenges with the on the technical side with the equipment uh, which we are working towards a settlement with the machine supplier um, but yeah that is a overall i think it's a, if you ask me would you do the investment again i would say yes because that is the future right but uh, how we are going to serve this customer then um, yeah we are producing the uh, we are, the i mean the machine is in operation and we are able to manufacture the material the only issue is about the wastage and the productivity which uh, should be better than what it is and uh, sir we we i mean uh, since the installation of this uh, machine we are facing lots of issues 
Yeah. And uh, I, I believe in the last one year, you guys are trying hard to, you know, stabilize and get a desired output. But it is still not able to achieve. I, I, I'm, I know this is the new technology, but uh, still, by when we can expect this, these all things get uh, settled? We are quite hopeful now that in another month or two, it should be uh, normalized because a, a German company has uh, found out the root cause and they are sending us the requisite parts which will be changing as also they have modified some software. So they expect that uh, they will be able to put this right and then we have to discuss with them the compensation uh, for the losses incurred by us. Okay, sir. Yeah. Good to Thank hear that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from Bhavesh Jain from DB Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, we saw a sequential debt reduction on quarter and quarter basis by 40, 40 crores around to 487 crores. So, what is the year end figure we can expect? Debt, uh, so the debt comprises of working capital and term debt. So uh, I'm talking about the net debt figure you have mentioned in the... the net debt. Uh, year end figure compared to the Q3 figure, uh, I would say, there will be, uh, it should be pretty much uh, little lower than the Q3 figure, I would say. Because we have some repayments in the current quarter and the drawdown on new debt in the current quarter is going to be very marginal because our capex uh, for the current year is almost completed. So there's no uh, new capex really in this next two months. So are we targeting for any aggressive debt reduction further ahead? Uh, no, we are not targeting any aggressive debt reduction because we are, as you know, we have a constant a growth uh, target and therefore we continuously expand capacities um, and this uh, current year we've added four new uh, printing lines which is quite unprecedented um, so it depends really on how much uh, is the uh, potential to grow and basis that uh, capex is going to be planned okay okay and my second question is regarding the TCPL InnoFilm. So we have seen some operational issues from past three quarters. So just wanted you to touch upon what kind of revenue potential we can expect from this subsidiary. So this subsidiary firstly is getting merged into the parent company. And uh, uh, NCLT has now passed in order and we hopefully uh, it will uh, happen. So the revenue will get merged. And uh, essentially, the uh, the film produced of this is going to be used in-house only. So it's not that we are going to sell too much of the film. So the potential is to replace raw material, which we buy today, with our own film. So I just asked because in Q2 we mentioned that we will supply third, we will start supplying yes, to third parties. We, part we do some film uh, sale, but. The focus is to convert on it, you know, and to make it into the packaging. Okay. And my last question is regarding the, we saw uh, other income of around 7 crore this quarter. So, like, what is it about? What is the nature of it? That's all the operational uh, other income like export benefits and scrap sales, etc. So, this is a pretty normal uh, figure. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Nothing exceptional. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Harshil Sethya from Ladder of Wealth. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, just wanted to confirm a news. Is there any news that uh, burger packaging is under the weather? <laughs> I don't know. I can't comment on this. They are perform They are very much in business. We don't like to comment on competitors on these calls, but uh, under the weather, we don't. I don't know. know. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. The next question is from Resham Jain from BSP Asset Managers. Please go ahead. 
Hi, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, I have just one question. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, capacity utilization, where are we currently, both in uh, carton as well as in flexible? And uh, with the addition of new lines this year, and uh, you know, films uh, plus creative uh, further getting added uh, will get ramp up. Uh, let's say next two three years. So, what kind of uh, growth one should expect? Uh, at a consolidated level uh, over uh, medium term? I would say that the, hello Risham, how are you doing? Um, I am good, sir. Yeah, we are, uh, I would say around 70, 72% capacity utilization in the current, uh, currently. And uh, I would say that we should be able to target to go up to 85, 90% uh, ideally. Um, and yes, uh, creative has the potential to, uh, you know, increase its revenue almost 50% from current base. You know, film, as I said, there's not much revenue uh, generation there because it will be more substitution of our raw material. Uh, and on the other side, you can say that from 70, 72, if we go up to 90, uh, that's the headroom we have. Uh, with us. So overall, I would say 20-25% uh, headroom for growth on based on current uh, uh, capacity. Okay. Understood, sir. That is the only question I had. Yeah, thank, thank you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from Ria Mehta from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. My first question is in regards to the raw material. We've been saying that the prices of uh, BOVP and all those packaging material have gone down. So how are the prices currently in the month of January? Are we seeing a further decline? No. In the month of January, in fact, the prices are going up a little bit because, again, this Red Sea is causing some disruption in their raw material. Uh, so, but it is not uh, anything significant, just a marginal increase. Just to add on that, basically I think we are at the kind of bottoming out of the RM pricing. Now it should start uh, going up slowly, slowly. Basically. Got it. And in terms of... Uh, hello? Yeah, go on, please. So, yeah, in terms of flexible packaging, as you said, that... We have a headroom for 20 to 25% growth. Do we have any further capacity of brownfield expansion post this? No, right now we have uh, completed all our current expansions and uh, nothing immediate uh, on the headroom. Uh, and currently the uh, utilization level of 70 to 72% is for the two lines, right? No, we are talking about for the company as a whole. Okay, okay. And for flexible as a segment, if you could help me. So in flexible, we have we used to have two lines. The third has just got commissioned. So the capacity utilization there is obviously lower. And there's a big... Two lines, how much that would be? That would be about... Uh, I mean, that will become 30% of the total capacity. So that's all free right now. Yeah. Plus a little bit from the last two lines. Sorry, I didn't get you. Basically, the third line has just been commissioned. Yes. So, therefore, the uh, capacity utilization in the flexible, considering the third line, uh, is uh, lower than it is in carton. But the third line has just got commissioned as uh, we speak in the current, I mean, in January month. So Sure. Uh, my question was more pertaining towards the uh, existing two lines. Uh, what would be the capacity utilization there? Yeah, it was obviously a few last percent, otherwise uh, then we wouldn't have put the third line. Got it. And uh, in case we want to put a fourth line, uh, is there a possibility? Yeah, there is a space available if that's your question. That's the question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from Pawan Kumar from Ratnatriya Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, what would be the CapEx plans going forward? 
I mean, since we have already made the additions, do we see any uh, capex plans in near term, or how do we look at that? So in the next financial year, we haven't yet formed up uh, our capex plans, but they are kind of moderate. There's not a very heavy capex uh, next year unless something new comes up. Okay. And to fill this flexible uh, new flexible line capacity and also the paper, paper board capacity which have, we have got extra, how yeah. much time do you envisage it will take, take us? This is an ongoing activity, so it will take a couple of quarters at least. But, I mean, you will see you mean better performance as we go along. So, are you saying uh, in a couple of uh, quarters full utilization? No, not full. I'm saying there will be gradual increase. Uh, mm -hmm. It's quarter on quarter. Okay. Uh, sir, can, can we expect uh, more than uh, double digit growth at least for the next year? How do we look at that? Our guidance is always, our target is always to grow double digit. And uh, certainly we would feel let down if we can't do that. Okay. And one last question, sir. Uh, do we think our current margin levels are sustainable, at least on the EBITDA or EBITDA? Margin you have to see our data for last few years uh, to answer that question. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Pulkit Singhal from Dambis Capital Management. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, First question is on the domestic uh, side. I mean, what is the potential for market share gains uh, going ahead here? I know we have been gaining at a certain rate uh, out there. Uh, one of the key competitors has also been growing quite rapidly. I'm just wondering if you could share some initiatives or some white spaces, or do you see some areas of faster growth than whatever the market is performing? Hi, Pulkit. I'll answer this question. See, uh, specific segments I won't get into. But there are many segments where we have very limited presence still, and uh, or we have no presence also. There are some geographies of the country where we have no presence. So in these segments all and these geographies, there is always a scope for us to grow in future. And there is our general customer growth, which has been very subdued these last few years, and we expect or hope rather that it should improve. And further, there is a premiumization and value addition in whatever we do. So that also adds on some growth. Um, and yes, there is always further scope, even within our existing customers, to add more share. Now, about the competition, certainly people will try to grow as fast as they can. But it's our job as responsible stewards of the company to ensure that we balance that with the sustainable uh, kind of uh, margin profile. So uh, definitely we are not in the business of losing share of business. But the point is that if the uh, basic uh, underlying market doesn't grow, then even the, no company can beat that. Ultimately, it depends on the uh, overall market. Yes, I mean, I guess your ability to increase share is also better than the market grows. I mean, yes. in a declining market, it gets tougher. Um, okay. And secondly, on the creative side, I mean, uh, good to know that you've increased capacity. I mean, what is the peak revenue which is now possible from the enhanced capacity? Basically, as I said earlier, it uh, can go to triple digit crore uh, revenue, but uh, it uh, really depends on the product mix because in this a uh, rigid box business it's a very it's dependent on the kind of uh, job that you get so there's the capacity figure per se is not really very meaningful so. and so you had this target of 100 crores for this for this business yes segment. let me continue to ask uh, any sense of like how many years it might take before we reach there uh, no but it's in, it's uh, growing every year so the rate of growth is uh, you know, it's a very low base, so okay. really one or two customers can really goose that. Okay. 
performance up. Right, right. And last on the export bit, uh, any update? I mean, I know you were targeting the U.S. market, and you are also trying to build up the sales to address various other, you know, markets. Uh, any update out there? And uh, I mean, are you seeing some of those conversations convert into orders, or what are the concerns that they might have? Oh, it's a work in progress. It's con- uh, constant effort is going on, and uh, overall, uh, no concern as such. It's positive. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you and all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. So thank you, everybody. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions. Should you need any further clarifications or you would like to know more about us, do feel free to contact us or CDR India. Thank you again for taking the time to join us on this call and look forward to interact again with you all in the future. Thank you very much. On behalf of DCPL Packaging Limited, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.